that. to be making a sweet breakfast treat for all of our roommates. Before we begin, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, like our videos, comment on them. Um, we really appreciate it. Today, we are making this special breakfast to celebrate Matan's birthday. Yay! Yay! And we wanted to do something special for him. He's working right now, and he'll come down later to a surprise breakfast treat. Very excited. He's gonna love it. I'm He's gonna, gonna love it. And we're gonna love it. <laughs> I'm excited to eat it. <laughs> I am making today a Wait. sour, well, I'm going to actually make it. I will be helping and eating it. Today we are going to make a sour cream coffee cake. I have made this recipe before and it went over so well. It was amazing. It was um, so good. I think I had seconds. <laughs> Maybe thirds. <laughs> But today, we decided to make it a little bit more up Matan's alley and add blueberries to it. So like a crossover between a blueberry muffin and a crumb coffee cake. Ooh. I love blueberry muffins. Um, and I've actually never attempted to put blueberries in a cake before. We will kind of be going through this together and hoping for the best. Hoping for the best. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be pretty good. I have an idea of what I'm going to do, but First time for everything. As I talked about in our last noodle video a couple weeks ago, I have prepared my mise en place for this recipe today. When it comes to baking, there are so many different powdery ingredients to measure, which creates a mess. So I really like to measure everything out before I start actually putting them together to get it all organized, get all of my ingredients put away, so I can clean up my counter and start with a fresh area. So I have everything I need here, minus the flour that I'm going to measure out for the cake. Um, today we are going to be using Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one gluten-free baking flour. This is definitely my choice of gluten-free baking flour for the moment. I've tried a couple different brands, um, but this is the best one to work for me so far. I'm always finding better and new gluten-free products out there. So let me know what kind of brands you use and I'd love to try them. Cool, let's get started. I am going to begin by making the topping for the cake, a crumble topping, which is in my opinion the best part. I have brown sugar, white sugar, and some kosher salt in the bowl, flour, and eight tablespoons of melted butter. Just all in the same bowl all together, just dump it in there. And then I'm just going to use a fork to stir it all together, mash up the brown sugar, and make it into little crumbles. After this is all mixed up, I will put it in the refrigerator to get cold and chilled so the butter can solidify again. To start the cake, I am mixing all my dry ingredients together. Then we will work on the wet ingredients. So I am using one and three quarters cup of flour. I don't have a three quarter measure, so I'm just gonna use three one quarter cups. <laughs> Math. Two tablespoons of cornstarch and cinnamon, kosher salt, baking powder, and baking soda all go in the bowl. Whisk it up. Now we're going to set this aside and move on to the butter. We are using room temperature butter um, so that we can easily uh, cream the butter with the sugar. The sugar granules kind of cut through the fat in the butter and lighten everything up to give you this fluffy, light cake. We are going to use a hand mixer. That's six tablespoons of butter. I think I'm gonna chop it up a little more, actually. And this is a pretty standard cake step, mm -hmm. but with gluten-free baking, you do 
definitely want to try to get it to be fluffy. The worst thing ever is getting a gluten-free muffin or piece of cake and it's just dense and dry. Happens all the time. This cake also has sour cream in it, which is going to make it really moist. And then with the fluffy butter and sugar situation and the eggs, it will um, become really fluffy. So we'll get all the good things we want. sugar incorporated with my butter and I'm going to add the other liquid ingredients. So I have two tablespoons of milk here, one cup of sour cream. The sour cream is your main liquid ingredient. So this batter is going to be a little bit thick. I think I'm going to blitz this with the hand mixer again to get it all nice and super light and fluffy. This is nicely incorporated. I am going to add some eggs to it and then use the hand mixer again to uh, mix those through. I like to crack them in a bowl separate before I add them to all of my other ingredients, just in case for some reason the egg is bad, then you haven't contaminated all the work that you just did with a bad egg. If an egg was bad, it would be very easy to tell. All the egg is incorporated into our wet ingredients. So I'm gonna get this out of the way here and bring our flour mixture back into the picture. We are going to add all these wet ingredients right into our dry ingredient bowl to incorporate them. It's a pretty standard cake making process. You mix your wet ingredients and your dry ingredients separate and bring it all together. Bring it all together. There are a few steps, but the end result is so worth it. I'm not gonna use a whisk for this because that's just silly. <laughs> just go around. We whipped a little bit of air into our wet ingredients, so don't beat your batter up. The air is delicate and you want to try to keep that in there as much as possible. Once you can tell that there are no pockets of flour, and it's kind of even in color. It's pretty much done. I am going to rest this now for about 20 minutes. With gluten-free baking, the flour sometimes can be a little bit gritty in your baked goods. That is because the flour has not absorbed enough of the hydration from your wet ingredients that you put in there. So I mixed it all together. If I just throw it in the oven now, it hasn't given those little uh, grains a time to absorb that, right? So we're going to rest it for about 20 minutes, let all of our flour hydrate nicely, and you won't get that kind of gritty texture that sometimes really comes along with gluten-free baking. Now, you can definitely make this cake with regular flour. Just sub in the regular flour for the gluten-free flour in the same amount, and then you can just skip that rest uh, phase because regular all-purpose flour doesn't tend to need that kind of extra stuff. As our cake batter rests, I am going to make a super easy, really yummy glaze to go on top of the final product. So I have three tablespoons of powdered sugar. I will use about half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And we will add about a tablespoon of heavy cream. 
the purpose of the cream is really just to um, liquefy the powdered sugar. So you are welcome to use regular milk or almond milk, whatever you want. I love the kind of richness that the heavy cream provides for this. I think it creates almost a vanilla ice cream flavor in this glaze. The vanilla extract really brings a brown color to it. So it is a light tan in the final product, but it's super tasty. Like I said in the beginning, I've actually never put blueberries in a cake before, but I do watch a lot of Great British Baking Show and they put blueberries in cakes and anytime they do it, they always coat it in a little bit of flour, which I believe the reason is that the flour creates kind of a gritty coating on the outside of the blueberry. So all the flour and other ingredients in your cake batter have something to cling to. Your blueberries can stay evenly dispersed in your cake, where if you don't dust them in flour, they'll sink to the bottom because fruit is heavy and the outside is slick. And if there's nothing allowing it to cling to your batter, then they're just gonna sink. I used about a tablespoon of flour to coat two little boxes of blueberries to have a coating like this. I didn't measure out these blueberries before I started. I'm gonna start with not all of them and see how it looks. I don't wanna add so many that there's only really blueberries in the cake which will kind of mess with the structure of it. Fruit has a lot of water in it and you don't want to have a lot of fruit next to each other, which will expel some of that water and it'll just create these really moist pockets of fruit without, soggy. yeah, a little bit soggy without allowing the, you know, integrity of your cake to really shine. Just based on looking at it, I think it can handle all these blueberries. It is a pretty dense batter, which makes me feel confident that our flour trick is gonna work and it's going to well disperse these blueberries as it bakes. Naomi gave me a task, so I get to come back. <laughs> I brought my sous chef in for the most difficult task there possibly is. <laughs> just kidding. I just take little crumbs of whatever I'm allowed to do. <laughs> Naomi tells me Sometimes I can do things. Sometimes I allow her in. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Camille is going to, what are you going to do, Camille? I was told to butter the pan um, on all the sides and the bottom. And then we are gonna add a wax paper piece to the bottom on top of the butter, which I'm still unsure why we're doing that. Well, the butter <laughs> will really help the wax paper stick to the bottom of the Pyrex. Um, but also this is how my grandma did it and you don't mess with how grandmas do things. You just <laughs> do them and you don't ask questions. Ideally, you would want to use parchment paper. However, we don't have any, so we're just gonna use this and everything's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. So this whole process is uh, helping your cake not stick to the pan and then having this piece of wax paper in the bottom really, really helps uh, the cake come out and ensures that it definitely will not stick or um, like crumble apart. I think I'm gonna make a little adaptation here because there is a crumb coating on this we're not gonna be able to flip it upside down to uh, you know, turn it out of the pan. So I think we're gonna do a long piece of wax paper, paper to like hammock it out. Camille, do you want, you want to do this step? <gasps> Another task. task. So what I want you to do is to only create a piece of wax paper that's gonna go through like this, right? So it's not gonna go up on these sides. So we're gonna just take a knife and slice it. Sure, you can use a big old knife. So Camille is just slicing the paper so that it fits mm -hmm. into our pan. For now, yeah, stop trying to take my time. I'm sorry, I it's very Naomi hard for me to control in the kitchen. You're doing great. Thank you. I'm doing really a great trying. job. That's oh. perfect. So. 
the wax paper is lining the bottom, a couple of the sides, and then at the end, we'll just be able to use these little handles to pull the cake out and onto a cooling surface. So, done resting? It's finished with its nap? I don't know how long it's been, but it's finished with its nap, it's fine. <laughs> We're going to put it in the pan and then top it with the caramel topping. She and I get to put the crumble on the top of the uh, coffee cake. And exactly. now I can tell Matan that I made the cake. Yes, she did. <laughs> she did the whole thing. So our crumble... Should I be crumbling it with my hands? No, with the fork is totally okay. fine. Our crumble solidified because the butter got cold, right? So um, now it's a lot harder. Camille's just taking that same fork um, and putting it into little crumbles. I'm just breaking apart any of the bigger buttery, sugary <laughs> Yum. pieces um, to make it so that it will like not be like super large chunks all over, but more dispersed little small crumbly Crumble. chunks. So kind of make it an even top layer of streusely perfect topping. All the bits. Don't, Don't forget any of it. No butter or sugar left behind. No. <laughs> Thought you were gonna eat it. Found a crumb. <laughs> mm, I just ate butter off my fingers. It looks so good. It is gonna be freaking delicious. And we have that vanilla glaze to go on top, so. Boom. Shoot. I'm excited. Our oven has been preheated to 350 degrees. We are going to bake it for about 40 minutes. I will put it in for 35 and then assess at that time. I am going to put it in the oven and then we will come check on it at that 35 minute mark. Amazing. It smells and so good. It smells even better than it looks. Oh my gosh. I'm really, really excited to try it, but I need to let it rest before we can dig into it. So Camille made some bacon. Yep. And I made some scrambled eggs. I'm gonna let this rest for 10 minutes, plate up the other stuff, and then we will bring Matan down for a surprise. Yeah. <music> and cooled now we are back with our finished breakfast plate for the birthday boy a couple things that I did notice about the cake when I took it out of the oven um, it is a little more moist than I was expecting I think what happened is that there is so much water in the blueberries that they must have steamed throughout the cake which created this tighter consistency than I had gotten the other time I made it without the blueberries, which, you know, was perfectly fine anyway. There were no complaints among all of our roommates. We did secretly try it off camera. We did. <laughs> it tasted amazing. The really, really good. tartness of the blueberries with the sweetness of the coffee cake really- It drew so on top. I felt like they, that paired really well. Yeah, it balanced out really nicely. Yeah. We loved it. The look wasn't exactly what I was expecting when I cut into it, but it's all about taste and the end result was great. I think next time I might put a little less blueberries to try to counteract what happened there. Uh, but you know, I would definitely make it again. When we first took it out, it we, we tasted it 
after 10 minutes pretty or so. Pretty hot, yeah. And it was pretty hot and it tasted just a little bit more like squishy and warm. Too and soft. Yeah. Once we let it cool, it kind of firmed up a bit and had a little bit more of that like fluffy texture that we were expecting. Yeah. I think a better suggestion would definitely be let it more thoroughly cool down um, so that center gets more cooled and you don't have that soft, squishy uh, kind of issue that we had. But worth the bake for sure. It was Still awesome. It was amazing. I'm just really happy we were able to do something like this for Matan. He is just such a wonderful person, boyfriend, roommate, friend, everything. And I know he's gonna feel really special like he should. He totally deserves the attention and the love and making food for people, which is something we've said from the beginning is one of the ways we show our love. Oh, definitely. And we know Matan will be happy with this, so we want him to feel our love for his yeah, birthday. Yeah, definitely. We always show our love through food. I'm gonna go grab him so he can finally eat his birthday treat. Right. Here he comes. The birthday boy. The birthday oh boy. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy Woo! birthday, birthday. Make a wish. Okay. <laughs> She really thought that one through. I'm excited about that. Yes. Yeah, so I made you your favorite scrambled eggs. Of course. And Camille made you some crispy mm -hmm. bacon. Mm -hmm. We did a little bit of sugar coated strawberries. I was going to say, they look like they have something on top. Yeah, we okay. just tossed them with sugar to make them a little sweeter. And then this is a blueberry coffee crumb cake. Whoa. Yes. That's so actually fresh really blueberries insane. inside. Oh, wow. See what you think. And this is gluten free. Yeah, it is yeah. gluten free, you know. What do you think? So good. <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> it's the first meal of the day. I've been waiting for this. Nice and crunchy, huh? And crunchy on the outside, yeah. Very good. Okay. <laughs> okay, you can, you can okay, leave. We'll say goodbye to everybody. Yeah. Thanks for coming and celebrating Matan's birthday with us and watching Naomi mostly and, and me helping with some You were really the great sous chef. Yeah. I needed you to butter that pan. <laughs> Thank God it was here. Yeah, thank um, God we were here. I really hope you try this cake at home. Try it with other berries in it if you'd like. We would love to know how you would make it at home if you'd choose to do blueberry or maybe chocolate chips or banana. Apple cinnamon. Apple cinnamon would be really good. Mm -hmm. Really, you can add anything to the basic coffee cake recipe like I did today and make it a totally new thing. So it's let us know it. in the comments what you think you'd do. And if you have any suggestions for us for the coming weeks, uh, just let us know in the comments. We'd love to see any any suggestions from you guys of what you like to eat and what you want to see us try to make. Yeah, definitely. Sounds fun. Thanks for coming today and thanks for hanging out with us and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. This is so good.